How y'all good people doing? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another video. If you're stopping by the channel for the first time, please consider subscribing to my channel. And while you're at it, smash that like button for me. I really would appreciate it. Also, hit that post notification bell so that you're notified every time I upload a new video. Be careful down in the comment section of the videos. A lot of spam, a lot of scammers. I will never ask you to contact me by WhatsApp or Telegram. I also do not invest money for my subscribers, so please be careful. Don't get yourself scammed. If you want to follow me on Instagram, go down to the description box of this video, click on that Instagram link, and follow me there. I do a lot of personal content mixed with financial freedom content on the Instagram page. Also, that is a great opportunity for you guys to send me DM. You know, send me a, a direct message, say hello, and, and obviously, if you want to, ask questions. That's a great way for you guys who follow me here on the YouTube channel. It's a great way for you to follow me on Instagram, but have access to me through asking questions through direct message. So if you don't mind, go down to the description box, click on that Instagram link. It's Richard Fain, Millionaire Mentor. Follow me on Instagram and then say hello and ask me some questions. Guys, I'm open to you asking financial questions, but you gotta, you gotta ask. And the best way to ask is by following me on Instagram. Like I said, that Instagram link is down in the description box. It's Richard Fain, Millionaire Mentor. And I'm days away from launching my new website. That's right, guys. Y'all have been asking for that new website, and I'm days away from launching it. I'm just adding digital products to the website right now, cleaning up a few things. But next week, got my fingers crossed, I will be able to launch the Richard Fain Millionaire Mentor website. And I'm very excited about that because we're going to be doing a lot of really good things on that website. We're going to have a, 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 a membership um, option on that website where you guys get to spend uh, one hour a week with me. Matter of fact, it'll probably be more than like 90 minutes a week with me just in that in that membership only section of the website where we're going to be doing live streams, Q&A's. We're going to be doing a lot of in-depth deep dives into building wealth through real estate investment, stock market investment, through building businesses, that type of thing. So be on the lookout for the website. It should be ready to go hopefully by next week. And of course, I'll do a video to let you guys know, but that's coming. But in the meantime, get down to the description box. Follow me on Instagram, Richard Fain Millionaire Mentor. If you want seven free stocks, Moomoo is going to give you seven free stocks and not just any seven free stocks. It's the Magnificent Seven. They're going to give you seven fractional shares of the Magnificent Seven stocks. Tesla, Apple, Microsoft, Meta, Amazon, Alphabet, and NVIDIA. How are you going to beat that, guys? All they're asking you to do is go down to the description box, click on the Moomoo Moo link, open up your Moomoo Moo account, put $100 in your Moomoo Moo account, they're going to give you the Magnificent Seven stocks. Seven of them. All seven Magnificent Seven stocks. Fractional shares. So guys, don't pass up that opportunity. Get down to the description box, click on that Moomoo Moo link, and get the Magnificent Seven. These are all blue chip, big boy, heavyweight, individual stocks, guys. Nobody else out there is giving you the Magnificent Seven for trying out their brokerage app. Moo Moo is. So get down to the description box, click on that Moo Moo link, and let's go. Let's build some wealth together. In today's video, we got a lot to cover, guys. The Fed, a, 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 actually another member of the Federal Reserve, has gone on record 
talking about why they should not decrease short-term interest rates. Now, that's important because we just got a report today. The jobs report for March of 2024 just came out this morning. And we're going to talk about that and why that's so important to interest rates. We're going to talk about that. We're going to also talk a little bit about Americans, average Americans, just like you and me. What do we really think about this economy? What is really happening to the American people in this economy that we currently find ourselves in? We're going to talk about that as well. And then we're going to talk a little bit about the White House and what they're trying to do in order to make it easier for federal employees to keep their jobs. And again, guys, I ain't got nothing, I ain't got nothing against federal employees. I love it. That's perfect. But again, we got to understand our, our, our country is operating at a, at a, at a deficit, not, not, not a surplus. We operate at a deficit, not a surplus. So we're going to talk about that, what old, old, old Joe Biden is getting ready to do or try to do um, to kind of make it easier on federal employees to keep their jobs, even if he's not in the White House. So we're going to talk about that. But the first things first, what is this deal about the economy Matter of fact, the market itself getting ready to crash. Well, here's the situation, guys. People out here believe this. I think some of the Fed believes this, that if interest rates don't come down soon, there will be a crash. There's going to be a crash if interest rates don't come down soon. And here is the thought process behind that. See, most Americans... You and I fall into that most Americans, that 99% of Americans, we only survive if we have access to loans. That's how most of us live our lives. That's how most of us survive, right? We, we don't just survive on our wages, even though that's, that's, that's the primary way we should survive is on our wages. That's not the only way we survive. Most of us, I would say the 99 percenters, most of us survive with a combination of three things. This is how we survive, a combination of three things. Number one, our wages. Number two, borrowing money. And then number three, whatever assets we have, including our personal savings. Those are the three things that we need to survive. Most of us. I'm talking about the 99 percenters. We need those three things. And right now, guess what? We only have one. We only have one. And how much longer can we survive on one, which is our wages? We don't have personal savings because we burnt through those in the go-go days. Right after the pandemic were the go-go days where everybody wanted to spend money. Everybody wanted to take trips. Everybody wanted to leisure activities, get back to traveling. See, everybody did that, so we blew through our personal savings. And then, of course, over the last 24 months, the Federal Reserve has increased short-term interest rates to fight inflation. So that took away our ability to borrow money. We don't have the ability to borrow money at a discount anymore. If we have to borrow, if, if, if our hands are tied and we have to go borrow it, we pay a huge borrowing cost. Think about if you got to go out and buy a car right now and, and you're a subprime borrower, you're going to pay 14 to 21 percent for your interest rate on your car loan, guys. Think about if you're someone that wants to buy a home, you're going to pay seven and a half percent interest rate. P people can't do that. You can't sustain that. Most people cannot afford that. And if they do bite the bullet and do it anyways, guess what happens? Something else in their life has to suffer. If I'm going to go out and get a 14% loan, something else in my financial life will suffer. Some other bill will suffer. Something will suffer. It just has to. So all I'm telling you here is there is a huge population of people out here believe we're headed for a mega crash. If the Fed don't in reduce these short term interest rates and the information we got today from the jobs report doesn't look good for cutting interest rates. Our labor market is 
red hot. The labor market is red hot. The jobs report came in today, guys, this morning. And remember all earlier this week, we had been talking about this jobs report and, and why it was so critical. Because if, if, if the Fed could justify reducing rates, they would. But they need justification. They need to be able to say, okay, labor market is cooling off. The economy is not adding as many jobs. There could be potentially a recession coming. So let's go ahead and lower these rates to give these people access to cheap money again. But when the labor market, the job market is red hot like it is, why? you can't do that. Because if you got a red hot labor market and then you reduce interest rates, now you create so much more demand that what will happen to supply if it can't keep up with it? Prices go up. So they won't reduce short term interest rates until the labor market cools off to a point where they believe it's safe to introduce that second level of money or, or money supply back to the economy. Here's what I'm talking about with the jobs report. I told you guys to be looking out for this. It's important. So, so stick around and, and, and let's go through these numbers because these numbers are the reason why the Fed is not reducing short-term interest rates anytime soon. And that will affect not the 1%. That's going to affect you and me. That's going to affect you and me because we're not going to be able to borrow money. Remember I told you we have three money streams that we have to depend on to live. Three money streams, our wages, our assets, which are include our cash and our reserves, right? And our personal savings, and then borrowing money cheaply. Those are our three sources of, of, of money we, can, we, we, we need to live. And right now we only got one. How long can we survive on this just one, guys? That's what you gotta be asking yourself. How long can we survive as a, as a nation on this one source of money? How long? I don't think much longer, and a lot of people agree that's where they're saying, if they don't reduce this year, we're gonna have a mega crash. But that is an opinion, right? You may differ with that opinion, but that's the sentiment out there. And I'm gonna back that up with some proof here. Let's talk about this jobs report for uh, March, this red hot jobs report. Job growth zoomed. This is the headline, guys. Job growth zoomed in March as payrolls jumped $303,000. $303,000, guys, added to the economy. 303,000 jobs added to the economy. Unemployment dropped to 3.8%. Remember last month in February, unemployment went up to 3.9%. And everybody was thinking, okay, we're headed in the right direction. Need to get unemployment to 4%. Need to get unemployment to 4.2%. So a lot of people thought in March, unemployment would go to 4%. No, it reversed itself and went back down. And we added 300,000 jobs to the economy. Now, some of y'all might be saying, well, Richard, why is that a bad thing if the economy is adding jobs? It, it, it's supposed to do that, right? Absolutely, it's supposed to do that. But you also got to understand at a certain level, is healthy for the economy, at least according to the Fed. See, anything under 200,000, like, like 200,000, 190, 200,000 jobs per month is healthy. But when you're in 300 and 400,000 jobs a month being added, guys, that's red hot. That, that's, that's, just, that's too much money supply coming from wages. So, so why would you introduce another money supply if you already got a lot of money supply coming from wages? People don't have a problem with losing jobs because they know they can get another one. You got two jobs for every person that's eligible. People ain't worried about losing jobs, so they just keep spending money. So then you introduce cheap money with the, with the wages. Now you got double the amount of money people can spend, and what are they going to do with it? They're going to spend it. And what does that do to prices of goods and services? Potentially could go up. Inflation could go back up. And that's what the Fed is scared of. And this report doesn't help that because of the, re the 
the decrease in unemployment rate went from 3.9 to 3.8. And you went from 275,000 jobs in February to 303,000. The Fed ain't gonna reduce rates with those type of numbers, guys. So we suffer, the American people suffer, not the 1%, but the 99% suffer. Here we go. Job creation in March easily topped expectations. They're just basically telling you there, the analysts thought the economy would add less jobs. The analysts thought the unemployment rate would go up, not down. That's what he's basically saying by it, it easily topped expectations and the sign of continued acceleration for what has been a bustling and resilient labor market. Non-farm payrolls increased 303,000 for the month well above the Dow Jones estimate for an increase of 200,000. Remember I just told you, that's where healthy, healthy is in that 200,000 range, that's healthy. That's that, that we can, we can do, deal with that, inflation can deal with that, interest rates can deal with 200,000, not 300. See, the, see the, the, the estimates were 200,000. We blew the estimates out by over 100,000 more jobs. Can you kind of get an idea why the Fed is saying, nah, we, we can't be lowering interest rates with this kind of, this booming, this booming labor market. Why would we do that? Inflation is just going to go back up. Because you know when people get money, guys, they don't just take that money and, oh, we're going to put it over here for a rainy day. That ain't what most of us do. We get this money and we go spend it. We go take a trip. We go buy a car. We go buy a luxury handbag. We go buy some Michael Jordan tennis shoes. That's what we do. We don't put it aside and say, you know something? Let me save for this rainy day. Mm -mm. We don't save for a rainy day because we're not programmed that way. We're programmed from birth to don't worry about no rainy days. Just spend it all right now and, and worry about the rainy day when it get there. See, that's how we're programmed from birth. And, and, and that's the problem. And the Fed know that. So they can't reduce rates and introduce another money supply to the economy then we're really going to have a problem. Inflation is going to go back up. So the Dow Jones estimated an increase of 200,000 and higher than the downwardly revised 270 gain in February. So the February came in at 275. They revised it to 270. So you got 270 in February. And then what do you get in, 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 in March? You get 303, right? Now, could that number be revised at some point in April? Sure. But I don't believe it'll be revised all the way down to 270. Uh, it may be revised a little bit. But right now, it's the number. It's 303. It's hotter than expected, right? See, what we want to see happen is, okay, January starts off high. We get better in February. Get closer to the 200 jobs, 200,000 jobs per, per month. And then, and then in March, we even get closer to the 200. And so on. We're going up and jobs added, not down. <laughs> so, so the reverse is happening, right? So we, we, we really gotta pay attention to what's going on here with, with the labor market because that's gonna be super important in, in, in order for us to understand what's going on here. The unemployment rate edged lower to 3.8% as expected, even though the labor force participation rate moved higher to 62.7%, a gain of 0 0.2 percentage points from February, a broader measure that includes discouraged workers and those holding part-time positions from economic reasons held study at 7.3. In the key, in the key average hourly earnings measure, wage, rate, wages rose, guys. So wages went up 0.3% for the month and 4.1% from year, year over year both in line with Wall Street expectations. So that met expectations. Just the jobs, overall job growth didn't meet expectations, right? So some of y'all might say, well, okay, where did the job growth come from? Where, who, 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 where are all these jobs coming from? Remember guys, when we talked about the last report in February, remember we even talked about the ADP report. See, a lot of these jobs are coming from the government and healthcare. Remember, I said that earlier this week. The government and healthcare 
are really the ones adding all these jobs, man. Think about it. Check this out. Out of the 303,000 jobs were added, you had almost half added by government and health care. Here it is. Job growth came in from many, from many of the usual sectors that have powered gains in recent months. Health care led with 72,000 jobs added, followed by government with 71,000 jobs added from the government, guys. I just told y'all we operate at a deficit at, in this government, not a surplus. We only bring in $4 trillion in tax revenue, but we have a $7 trillion budget. But yet and still, month over month, we're adding 50,000, 70,000, 80,000 jobs to the government. Why is the government getting bigger when they should be getting smaller? We operate at a deficit, not a surplus. We got to go out and borrow $3 trillion just to break even on this thing in 24. But yet and still, we added 72,000, I'm sorry, 71,000 jobs in just in March. Last month, guys, they added 52,000. So they added 52,000 in February. They added another 71,000 in March. I don't know what's going on with our government. And I ain't picking sides and I don't know, I, you know, I'm just telling y'all it don't make no sense to me. I'm just a normal guy here thinking about the numbers. I'm thinking, okay, you, you bring in $4 trillion in tax revenue, but, but you already went on record saying your budget for 2024 is $7 trillion. That's a $3 trillion shortfall, but yet and still you're adding all of these jobs every single month to the economy. How are you paying these people? We operate at a deficit. How do you pay them? I don't know. Y'all tell me. Some of y'all are a lot smarter than me when it comes to this. So tell me how we pay all these people that we're adding to the government workforce when the government operates at a deficit. We got to go out and borrow $3 trillion just to break even. I don't know. Y'all tell me. I told y'all what's happening with health care, aging population in this country. Y'all know health care is going to always add people. Why? Because. They're not in the business of curing diseases. They're in the business of chronically treating. It's chronic treatment is the business that healthcare is in. They're not in the business of curing anything. They're in the business of chronic treatment. And when you're in the business of chronic treatment, you need to hire people. Because especially when you got an aging population who you got to chronically treat. You got to chronically treat young people. You got to chronically treat Middle-aged people, you got to chronically treat older people because of why. That's the way the healthcare system in this country is set up. They make more money through treatment, chronic illnesses. They make more money that way. I'm just giving you my opinion. They make more money when they don't, when they can just continue to treat you and you keep, like I told you, 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 you go to the hospital, you might go there for just a fracture to your finger. Let's say you, you, you get your finger slammed in the door and you go to the hospital and you say, give me an x-ray. Give me something for this. You might get a $19,000 bill in the mail. You, you mess around and get a $19,000, $25,000 bill for, for a finger. That, that, I'm not talking about a finger that they got to surgically put back on. I'm talking about just a, 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 a fracture in your finger that they put a little thing on it, give you a little bit of medicine, send you home. You might get a $20,000 bill, man. You might. I'm just telling you that's what's going on in our healthcare system. So I understand why they add so many people because they can, right? It's a trillions and trillions and trillions and trillions of dollar industry. They, 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 they chronically treat illnesses. They ain't trying to cure anything. So, so that's my opinion. What else added jobs in, in, in March? Now, this one right here, guys, y'all know I struggled with this last month. I'm going to struggle with it again this month. Why in the world is leisure and hospitality adding 50,000 jobs in March? This is the part I don't get. 99% is we down here broke, no, no assets, no wealth, living paycheck to paycheck. But yet and still, we're adding 50,000 jobs in leisure and hospitality. Maybe that's the 1%. Maybe the 1% requires that. I don't know who requires that, but I'm, that's one I struggle with. Construction added 39,000 jobs. 
Retail added 18,000 jobs. So retail down at the bottom, which they should be, right, in my opinion, I'm still struggling with government and I'm struggling with leisure and hospitality, just based on where I know American people are. I'm struggling with that. I'm struggling with 50,000 jobs added for leisure and hospitality. I just, people are going out too much. We're still doing too, too much, um, too much pleasure in ourselves. We, we're doing too much uh, celebrating, too much, oh, I owe myself this. But yet and still, we ain't building any wealth. We'd rather take that money, that, the little money that we do have, and we'd rather go out and spend it on leisure and hospitality instead of taking that money and putting it in something that can build wealth for us over the next 10 years. That's how we're wired. That's why we're in the predicament we're in. That is why, guys, we're in the predicament we're in because our values when it comes to money are flip-flopped. We'd rather go pleasure ourselves, go to a watering hole, go to an eatery, spend $100, $200, instead of taking that money and putting it in something that can build wealth for us, we don't want to do that. Why in the world would we be adding 50,000 new jobs? Why would we be accelerating leisure and hospitality? Why? Because people got jobs. See, when people got jobs and they got wages, guys, this is what we do. And this is what the Fed knows. That's why they won't reduce interest rates for us. See, they know in America, we are not a, a, a country of savers. We are a country of spenders. And the Fed knows this. They're saying to themselves, you know some guys, if we reduce these interest rates for these people, they ain't going to do nothing but take that money and go pleasure themselves. They ain't going to do nothing but take that money and go buy big screen TVs. They ain't going to do nothing but take that money and go buy Michael Jordan tennis shoes. They ain't going to do nothing but take that money and go to Bahama trips. They ain't going to do nothing but take that money and go to Gucci, Louis Vuitton. That's what they're going to do with it. They ain't going to build no wealth. They're going to take this money and, and pour it back into the economy a hundred times over increase demand, we ain't going to have enough supply to meet demand, and then prices are going to go back up, aka inflation goes back up. And then we're right back where we were in, in, in March of 2022. See, the Fed know that. That's why right. they won't reduce rates because of the labor market. When the labor market is this hot, it gives us a false sense of financial security. We're like uh, Tarzan in the jungle. You know how Tarzan and the gym be swinging back and forth? That's how we are with jobs. We're, we're confident because we know there's two jobs for every one of us. We know if I, if I get fired, I go get me another one. We know year over year we got a 4% increase in salary. As long as we're feeling that good and that, that confident about the job market, we're going to keep spending money like crazy. And the Fed know that. The only way to get us uncomfortable is if the Unemployment rate shoots up to four and a half percent and we're only adding 150,000 jobs a, a, a month. That's when we get serious because now we start to say to ourselves, oh, my God, there's a possibility I could lose my job. Oh, shoot. I better butt bet, but, but batten down the hatches. I better slow down. I got to stop all this spending. Shoot. They just laid off 15 people at my company. Oh, God, Lee. They're telling us we, we won't even get a, a, an increase this year in salary. See, that's when people start waking up and start batting down the hatches, when they start having conversations like that. But with a labor market or, 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 a, or a jobs report like this, the American people are like, well, why should we slow down? Our, our job market is great. We're getting raises. I'm going to keep spending. Eh, I'm going to go out here into a... Have me a drink. Get me a nice meal. That's why leisure and hospitality is adding so many jobs. Because we as Americans are still continuously buying into this thing and going out to dinner and going doing all this stuff we need to limit. I'm not saying cut it off completely, but limit it. I mean, who has to go out to dinner every night? Who got to go out boozing and drinking every night? I mean, come on. But yet and still, when we look at our financial situation in this country, no wealth. Remember that we, we talked about yesterday, um, we talked about uh, millennials. We talked about Gen Z. We talked about Gen X. We talked about baby boomers. And we talked about how much money each one of those categories would need 
at retirement. And remember, um, millennials and, and Gen Z, they thought they needed $1.6 million at retirement. Remember, Gen X thought they needed about $1.5 million. And baby boomers thought they needed a million. But that's what they thought. But the actuality, what they actually had was about $108,000. That, that was for Gen X. You need 1.5, but what you really have is 108. But yet and still, we'll go out to eateries every night. We'll go drinking and boozing every night. We'll do all these leisure activities, all this traveling. We continue to do that because we got a strong labor market behind us. And we know that, right? And the Fed is saying only way we stop Americans from doing that so we can reduce short-term interest rates, we got to get this labor market to cool off so people can have a, a sense of um, urgency. They can feel some financial pain. Right now, we ain't feeling no pain in the labor market because we got two jobs for every person. So we ain't, there ain't no pain. There's no pain. We need pain in order to get these rates down, right? We need some pain to get these rates down. But nevertheless, this is what we've got right now. This is another really strong report, said Lauren Goodwin, economist and chief market strategist at New York Life Investments. This report and the February report showed some broadening in terms of job creation, which is a very good sign. Yes, that's a good sign. But who is it a good sign for? I think, yes, as Americans, we want to feel secure about our job. But we also need to understand our wages alone for most of us ain't going to cut it. It's not going to cut it. We need more than just the wages. Right. We need access to savings. We need access to low and cheap loan money. We just do. Right. That's that's the truth. We can sit up and say no one should ever have any debt, but we know that's not reality. Right. That's make believe. Reality is people are going to have to have debt. Hell, I had to have debt for 25 years. I used debt. So debt ain't a bad thing if you use it properly. It's not a bad thing. I don't know why people think it is. It's not if it's used properly. But if you got high interest rate credit card debt, high car loan debt, that's bad. That's bad debt. But good debt can put money in your pocket. Bad debt takes money out of your pocket. So just remember that debt is not all debt is not bad, guys. It depends on what you do with the debt what makes it bad or what makes it good, right? This report, February report, showed some broadening in the terms of job creation, which is a good sign. Despite the move lower in the broader unemployment level, the rate for black people, let me, let me, let me rewind, let me back that up because some of y'all think it's worse. <laughs> it's worse. Here we go. Despite the move lower in the broader unemployment level, the rate for black people surged to 6.4%, a gain of 0.8%, tying the highest level since August of 2022. Rates for Asians, Hispanics, both fell sharply to 2.5 and 4.5. So let me make sure I get this right. Despite the move lower in the broader unemployment level, so basically unemployment went down to 3.8%, the unemployment rate for black people surged to 6.4%, tying the highest level since August of 2022. Rates for Asians and Hispanics both fell sharply to 2.5 and 4.5. So black folks, if you're watching this, which I know you are, our unemployment rate is a little different. It's a little different. It's 6.4%. That's a lot, guys. That's a lot. Other groups, 2.5%, 4.5% respectively. You better think about that. You better hang your hat and, and really understand what I just said. 6.4%. Think about that. 
That's the highest it's been since August of 2022. So the job market ain't all that pleasant for, 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 for a lot of black folks. Unemployment is up. So you better do some type of financial checkup from the neck up, guys. I'm trying to tell you, ain't nobody going to save you. So I'm just giving you the numbers here. You go fact check it. I'm not no expert here. I'm just reading, reading the report. Just telling you what I see here. Just giving you my opinion. 6.4% unemployment rate. I don't know. That don't sound good to me. Especially compared to other groups of people. Don't sound good. I don't know what the world's going on in, 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 the, in the black unemployment number. I don't know what's going on, but, but you better double check it. You better figure out what's going on with you and your employer. Looks like the unemployment rate is up in our, our group. So uh, you better double check it. Better protect yourself. Better get you some multiple income streams. I keep telling you that, but no, 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 no. Ah, I'm tired of you saying that. Stop saying that. You keep saying that every video. Why? Because you, you, your unemployment rate is 6.4%. Compared to other groups, that's uh, very high. So you might want to take that as a sign of, this guy might know what he's talking about. Maybe I should diversify my income sources. Maybe I should go out and get some, some secondary income. I, I don't know, maybe. Black people, 6.4%. Black people surged to 6.4%, a gain of 0.8%. So it went up, tying the highest level since August of 2022. OK, let me move on. Markets have been keeping close watch over the unemployment data, particularly as the Federal Reserve weighs in next moves on monetary policy. Stocks have tumbled this week. Amit T. Oh, that was just clickbait. OK, no, what? I'm trying to tell you what, what's happening here. Oh, that was just clickbait. There's no mega crash coming. OK, here we go. Let me just keep going here. Markets have been. Markets have been keeping close watch over the employment data, particularly as the Federal Reserve weighs its next move on monetary policy. And that's just interest rates, right? Stocks have tumbled this week amid concerns that a strong labor market and resilient economy could keep the central bank on hold for longer than expected. See? See? See how we tie this thing all back together? Because y'all think I just be... No. See how I... T see? That ain't me saying that. That's what the market's saying. The market's saying that the stock market tumbled, which it did. For the whole week it tumbled. Because of anticipation for this labor report. And guess what? The labor report did not, uh, <laughs> it didn't surprise us. Right? It didn't disappoint us. It's higher than expected. Which I figured it would be. So it's higher than expected. That means no rate cuts. So what does that do to the stock market? What does that do to crypto? What does that do to uh, other asset classes, potentially? See, I keep telling y'all guys, the higher interest rates are, the lower the stock market goes. The only reason the stock market has been performing well over the last quarter is because of anticipation that the Fed would be reducing. So investors were anticipating, let me make some moves so I'm in position so when the Fed reduce, my assets go to the moon. Investors were just putting themselves in position, guys. That's all they've been doing these last quarter. Now the investors are starting to figure out the Fed probably ain't reducing anytime soon. Let me pull my, my profits out and let me move them over here to, to safety. So now you're starting to see this week, big time investors, I'm talking about the big boy investors, the big 1% investors, they're starting to pull money out, take profits from the first quarter. They're saying, okay, since the Fed ain't gonna reduce interest rates, we killed it in the first quarter, let's take our profits. Since the Fed ain't reducing anytime soon, let's go ahead and take our profits. We'll move them over here to U.S. Treasuries. We'll move them over here to money market accounts until we're ready to make our next move. That's what's happening. That's what you've seen this week in the stock market is institutional investors, hedge funds, Wall Street firms, 
billionaire investors are starting to take profits again. And as they take profits, stocks go down. And they're moving their profits where? Money market accounts, treasury, uh, treasury bonds. Maybe not bonds, but maybe bills or notes. But they're moving it to some short-term instrument until they're ready to put it back in the market again when they get more clarity. Once they get more clarity from the Fed, then they'll move back in. But is that a bad thing for you and me? I keep telling y'all there are two types of investors. You got us. We're the 99%. They call us retail investors. And then you got institutional investors, big boy investors. See, normally with big boy investors, they're normally short-term investors. They move money in and out of stuff. They're dealing with trillions and trillions and trillions of dollars. So they move money in and out of stuff. There ain't no long term. It's just short term. But over here with these retail investors, it's a different mindset because we don't have any wealth. We're trying to build wealth. So ain't no sense of us taking our little thousand dollars, putting it in something and trying to move it out in a week, in two weeks, in a quarter. You're going to build wealth of pennies. Right. But when you got trillions of dollars, you can do that because you got trillions of dollars. When you got like a thousand dollars, that strategy don't work. The strategy that the one percent use up here with trillions of dollars, a short term strategy don't work when you don't have that type of money. When you're trying to build wealth, you got to develop a long term strategy. So you got to take that thousand dollars a month over a long period of time. Every single month you put the thousand in over a long period of time and boom, that's how you build wealth when you're a retail investor. So it's two types of investors, retail investors, institutional investors, big boy investors, hedge funds, Wall Street firms, billionaires. They roll in a whole different category with investment. Now these folks right here are taking profits off the table right now because they know the Fed ain't reducing rates. So they're gonna take their profits from the first quarter of 2024. They're taking their profits. Had you guys been invested, now I know some of you were, but here's what I'm trying to tell you. Had you been invested, you would have had an upside. Now, as they pull their money out, the market is not going to, it's not going to, it's not going to go down by 30%. It's going to go down a little bit, and they call that a, a period of correction. See, when the market goes down like that, once the big boys start taking their profits, it slightly goes down, and they call that a period of correction. They call that a period of consolidation and a period of correction. The market is just correcting itself 5%, 2%, 1%. It's just correcting itself. All that fancy talk is is just the big boys taking profits off the table. But for people like you and I, that's not a bad thing because we know if we can buy our favorite companies, our favorite ETFs, our favorite index funds at a discount, we're going to be better off down the road, if we can buy them a little cheaper right now. And then down the road, they'd be worth more. That's why the long-term strategy for most retail investors is the right strategy. Because we got a little bit of money we're dealing with. When you got a little bitty money, it takes longer to grow that little bitty money to big money. When you already got big money, it don't take much to grow that big money to a little bit bigger money. If I'm dealing in trillions of dollars, I got a better chance of building wealth short term with a trillions of dollars than someone that got $1,000 or $1,500 or $100. You, you're not the same type of investor and we should get out of that mentality. Well, they got, well, why are the big boys selling? Why would not I sell? Because you can sell, but that little $1,000 you put in in the first quarter, what is it going to be worth? $1,100? thousand fifty? Is that enough to take care of you for the rest of your life? Then why in the hell would you be selling? Why would you be leaving an investment when you, you don't you ain't made enough to do nothing? So I tell people, why would you leave an investment if you haven't made enough money in that investment to change anything financially in your life? What's the point? Keep it in your savings account. Why would I invest $1,000 a month as soon as I hit a little bumpy pat patch in the stock market, I'm ready to quit? Keep it in your savings account. Keep it in your savings account. 
If you want to really build wealth, you got to have five, 10, 15 year outlook, man. You got to be able to be in this thing for that long when you're dealing with a little bit of money you're investing. Now, if you come into the game with half a million dollars, that's different. That's different. You can play up here with the big boys if you come into the game with a half a million dollars to invest. But if you're coming in like most of us between a hundred and a thousand dollars a month to invest, guys, you got to be in this thing for 10 years. You're not going to make any money unless you're in this thing for 10 years. And you're not going to make any money unless you put that thousand dollars in every single month for 10 years. That's where the real money is made for most of us. They don't have to do that up here. They already have trillions. They already have billions. See, when someone makes a $500 billion investment, as opposed to somebody making a $500 investment, it's two different investments. Time frame is different. You hear what I'm saying? So for us as retail investors and people that are trying to build wealth, this is not bad. It's not bad. If I can buy assets at a discount, if they're really good assets, I just bought some assets this morning. Like I told you all I do every morning, the market is open. I'm putting one to three hundred dollars in every single day. The market is open. I don't you think I care about if SPLG is trading in the red today? I'm loving it trading in the red. I just picked up some FTEC. It's in the red. Perfect. Because I know at some point in these next 10 years, it's going to go back in the green. And that's where I make my net worth. I buy it in the red or I could buy it in the green. It doesn't matter to me. I just buy every day because I know if I do that and I'm in the market 365, I'm going to make money down the road. Do, do, do I know everything about the stock market? No. Do I need to know everything about the stock market? No. I don't. I don't need to be the expert. So here we go. Here we go. Markets have been keeping close eye. We talked about that. The stock market futures rose following the report while Treasury yields added gains. The, 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 the stock market futures rose. But when I looked at it prior to getting on the call, prior to getting in the chat, everything down. Dow, S&P, NASDAQ. Dow fell under 5,200 points. Nad, I mean, Dow, uh, uh, S&P fell under 5,200 points. The Dow was under, it was around 38,000. And I believe the NASDAQ was in the 16,000 range. But, but all three were in the red. All three were in the red. Like I said, that's not a bad thing for you and I. We can, we can, we can be buying these things cheap today. That's what I did. I, I executed a trade this morning before I got on this live stream. <laughs> Because I know 10 years from now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to be in the catbird seat, right? I'm going to be in the catbird seat. I already know that because I've done that for the last 25 years. Some of you are just new at that, so you don't quite get it. But just keep paying attention. Keep trusting the process. Stay focused on building wealth, right? Stay dialed in, stay locked in, stay plugged in, and you'll be fine. You'll be fine. I wouldn't steer you down the wrong path, guys. Because it's the same path I'm going down. I'm taking you down the same path I'm going down. I'm not telling you one thing and I'm doing something else. I'm going down that same path you going down. So wherever you end up, I end up. Wherever I end up, you end up. But you got to follow down the path. You got to have some trust in yourself, in your instinct, right? Here we go. The Fed is looking to guide inflation back down to 2% annually, a goal that has proven elusive. Even as the rate of price gains has decelerated, they're talking about inflation, from its peak in mid-2022, most measures have inflation running above 3%, though the Fed's preferred gauge is below that level. Remember, I talked about that the other day. I said, you know, the Fed is stuck on this 2% thing. The new normal might be 3%, right? And I think at some point they will get that. Maybe not today, but at some point they got to get that. It may not be 2% anymore. It may be 3%. Market pricing is pointing toward the first interest rate cut coming in June. Though several Fed officials, including Chairman Jerome Powell, this week indicated 
They prefer to take a cautious, data-dependent approach. Guess what they just got today? A piece of data. And guess what that data says? Don't reduce short-term interest rates. That's the data he's talking about. And guess what they're going to get next week? Another piece of data. And guess what that data is? That's going to be the CPI inflation report for March. That's coming next week. I believe it's coming next week. What's the date? The 5th? Yeah, I think it's coming next week. If not next week, the week after that. But it's coming. It's coming. The CPI inflation report for March is coming. That's the second piece of data they're waiting on. They just got the first piece, which is the jobs report. Wasn't real good. Not when it comes to whether they're going to reduce short-term. I'm not saying it's a bad thing for the economy. People need jobs. But I'm saying when it comes to interest rate reduction, it was not a good report. Let's just be clear. From an interest rate reduction standpoint, it was not a good report. So the next piece of data, CPI inflation report, is coming out. That's coming out next week, I think. And you better cross your fingers because if that thing says inflation is still creeping up, we may not even get a rate reduction this year. I'm going to be honest with you. We may not. We may not. We may not get a rate reduction this year if, 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 if that happens. Despite a string of positive gains that has kept unemployment below 4%, since January 2022, there have been some signs of cracks. For instance, the level of household employment had grown only modestly over the past year, while temporary employment has declined sharply. However, the household survey, which is used to calculate the unemployment rate, posed an even more robust gain in March, up 498,000 more than absorbing the 469,000 increase in the civilian labor force. Make a long story shot, short, red hot labor market, basically, guys. It's a red hot labor market, red hot labor market. And then you got another Federal Reserve guy. It says the S&P 5, here's the headline right here for this one. I thought this was pretty good. The NASDAQ index and the S&P 500 Dow forecast stocks retreat as Birkin says recent inflation data was less encouraging. That's another Fed guy. See, you got another Fed guy here. S&P 500 is losing ground as traders react to comments of Richmond Fed President Thomas Birkin. He said that recent inflation data has been a little less encouraging and argued that it was a good idea for the Fed to take its time before cutting rates. There's another Fed president. We've been talking about these Fed presidents and these Fed governors weighing in, not just to, uh, uh, Chairman Jerome Powell, but you got other people on this committee, guys. Now, I don't know if this dude is a voting member, but he is a Fed president. So he's weighing in. He's weighing in. It looks that profit taking also serves as a significant catalyst for the pullback. Remember, I just said a few minutes ago, big whales, big boys, big, big Wall Street billionaires are taking profits. That's what they're just saying here in this thing. It, it looks that it looks that profit taking also serves as a significant catalyst for the pullback in the stock market. Stocks are trading near historic highs. So traders are sensitive to any news that could be seen as bearish. Today, traders also had a chance to take a look at the initial jobless claims report, which showed that initial job claims increased from 212,000 to 221. The current pullback is broad and almost all market segments are moving lower. Energy stocks are moving flat, supported by rising oil markets. So, yes, is there a possibility for a mega crash, guys? Absolutely. Absolutely. If the Fed keep these rates higher for longer, absolutely, there is a chance for a crash. But again, that's an opportunity for you and me to build wealth. All I can tell you is hold on to your job, create you some multiple streams of income, and be ready to double down when it's time to double down. The double down may never come, but be ready. But the only way you're ready to double down, you got to have cash, mucho dinero. 
green backs. You got to have that. So if you don't have any of that, you don't take advantage of nothing. Nothing. And for you black folks that are watching this, 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 this video, unemployment rate, 6.4% among black people. That's not good. It's not good. So you better create some multiple streams of income so you're not blindsided. Walk into your little employment one day and people, eh, we don't need you. Better get you some multiple streams of income, guys. That's the only thing protects you. That's the only thing will protect you. Multiple streams of income. One of the last things I want to cover, and then we're going to wrap things up. Here's why Americans are so unhappy with the economy. Remember, I told y'all I was going to give you some, some real world feedback from people, right? Reason, reason Americans are so happy, unhappy with the economy. Americans remain gloomy about the U.S. economy, even as GDP continues to expand and unemployment is at a five-decade low. The disconnect is spurring some policy experts and economists to examine the root cause of the gap and to look beyond the nation's still elevated inflation. By many measures, the U.S. consumer remains in good shape, most people who want a job have one, while wages are finally outpacing inflation. In 2023, the stock market rebounded from a brutal bear market in the prior year, bolstering the retirement and investment accounts of millions of Americans. Really? Really? Is that true? Hmm. Let's keep reading. One recent analyst from the Treasury found that Americans in 2023 could not only afford the same goods and services they did in 2019, they have an extra $1,000 on hand to save or spend. Which one you think they're going to do? Now, if Americans got an extra $1,000 on hand, which one you think they're going to do, save or spend? Be honest. Which one do you think they will opt for, according to this analyst? Right. They have an extra one thousand dollars on hand to save or spend. Because median earnings have increased faster than prices. Yet, if you ask Americans about the economy, most give it a poor rating. You know why they give it a poor rating? Because they're down here in the bust economy. They're down here in the bust economy. That's why they give it a poor rating. <laughs> they got high interest rate credit card debt. They got high interest rate loan debt from car loans. They can't buy a house. Yeah. They got student loan debt that people have been saying they're going to forgive and ain't nobody forgiving it yet. <laughs> Some people got this forgive, but not everybody, right? That's the, that's the question, right? That's the question. Yet if you ask Americans about the economy, most give it poor rating. About six in 10 people polled by CBS News said they rated the economy as fairly bad or very bad. Why is that? Because most Americans are down here in this bust economy that I've been telling you guys for months about. You got the boom economy, you got the bust economy. Former President Trump calls it a cesspool economy. That's what he calls it. I call it a bust economy. He calls it a cesspool. If you guys don't know what that is, that's not good. See, that's where most of us are participating. Down here in this really, really bad economy. There are three plausible explanations. The first is self-evident that people truly find the current economy unsatisfactory. Said Ben Harris, director of economic studies program at the book, the Brookings Institution on a Wednesday podcast to discuss the issue. This could be be due to unhappiness with the level of prices or dissatisfaction with long-standing st structural issues like economic inequality and housing affordability. You think? Yeah, that's that bust economy, right? People can't afford to buy a house. 
The, the, the economic inequality, well, what's that? That's the haves and the have-nots. That gap is getting wider. The haves are taking more and more of the wealth. The have-nots get less and less of the wealth. That's what they mean by economic inequality. It's getting worse. Another explanation he added could be so-called referred pain. The idea that Americans are unhappy about other issues such as gun violence or social isolation, which then tarnishes their view of the economy. Lastly, Harris said there's evidence that polarized news sources and negative economic coverage could be the blame. Maybe, yeah, because you know how it works. The mainstream media is the propaganda machine for the one percent. So what do they do? They just flood you with all this bad news. They just And y'all watch it every day, glued in, on your phone, watching it every day. Just bad news, bad news, bad news from the mainstream media. And psychologically, it affects you. I keep telling you, what you let into the filter system comes out of the filter system, right? So you got to be careful with that. Whatever you let in the filter system comes out of the filter system. And that's exactly what this gentleman's talking about. You get flooded with all this bad news over and over and over, and psychologically, it, it just breaks you down. Before you know it, you're just thinking about bad stuff all the time. How do, where do you think that come from? The crap you listen to, the crap you watch, right? So be careful what you let in. Be careful what you listen to. Even so, there are cracks emerging that point to increasing economic stress among a portion of the U.S. households as the economy, by most measures, remains strong. Here are three charts that we're not going to go into all of that. I just want to give you an idea, guys, of what Americans are saying around the country, right? See, see, these people up here are saying we got a great economy. Just like I was telling you, President Biden said, best economy in the world, picture perfect. That's what came out of an article I read to you guys yesterday. Best economy in the world, picture perfect. And then you came down here and you had former President Trump come out and say, no, this is a cesspool economy. So who, who do you believe? Well, I, I think you just look at your financial situation and you can, you can make your own decision. Just look at your financial situation and, and, and decide which one of these economies are you living in. It doesn't matter what they think. You are smart enough to figure out which economy you're living in. Either you're living in this boom economy where you're buying assets, you're keeping your consumer debt to zero, you, you got an emergency fund, you know, you're paying yourself first. You're doing great. Or you're living down here in this economy where you're living paycheck to paycheck. You don't have an emergency fund. You have high interest rate credit card debt. You have student loan debt. You're not paying yourself first. You have no money to pay yourself first. You're not investing in assets that build wealth and create passive income. Which one of them are you living in? You can answer that question. That, everybody has to have that conversation with themselves. They got to have that conversation of what economy are you living in? What are you doing with the money that you make? Obviously, we got a really strong labor market. So no one should be saying anything about, I can't find a job, I, 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 I ain't working. That's a personal decision. I just read you the numbers from the labor market. Just read you the numbers. Just read you the numbers from the labor market, from the jobs report. There ain't no reason why nobody in America right now shouldn't have a job. There's no reason why anybody in America shouldn't have a primary job and some secondaries. There's no reason for it. We, we, we have a labor market. We have an economy that's adding 300,000 jobs. You got the healthcare industry adding 72,000 in March themselves. So, hey, man, go to the healthcare industry. Plenty of jobs there. Hey, matter of fact, go to the government. They added 71,000 jobs in March. Plenty of jobs there at the government. Oh, better yet, 
Leisure and hospitality added 42,000 jobs in March. Hey, plenty jobs out there is my point, guys. There ain't no, oh, I, ooh, uh, I ain't making enough money on my job. That's your, that's, your, that's your choice. Anybody that's not making the kind of money that they want to make, that's your choice. Because you can make it as much money as you want if you just made your mind up and, and went out and did it and, and get from behind all these excuses you hide behind. You can make as much money as you want. There, there is no shortage of money in this country. The problem is, is people hide behind excuses. They hide behind fear. They hide behind pride. And they just never take action. That's the real truth. And the people that do take action, they're the people that build wealth. It's pretty simple. You take action and you execute, you build wealth. If you sit around and make excuses why you can't take action and execute, you don't build wealth. That's it. There's no doom and gloom here. It's just the truth. See, a lot of folks want you to get on here. People like me, they want me to get on here and just paint a picture of this beautiful rose garden. It's a beautiful rose garden. It's, oh, it's fabulous. Let's just keep watering it. Oh, look at that beautiful one there. Let's pick that one. Let's go inside and build us a really nice vase with a bunch of beautiful roses. See, that's what most people want you to get on here and say. Why? Because that makes them feel better. That makes them feel better because the, the situation they put themselves in they want to feel better about it. They want to feel better about being lazy. They want to feel better about making excuses. They want to feel better about blaming somebody else. So they love to have people come in here that encourage them to, 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 to just don't worry about money. You shouldn't worry about that. That should be the last thing you worry about. What you should really worry about is find your inner self. Where is your inner self at? Okay, I'm going to see how your inner self going to take care of you when you get to an age where you ain't got no assets and you ain't got no income coming in. Um, what is your inner self going to do then? How is your inner self going to take care of you then? What is your inner self going to do then? Guys, you really, all that hocus pocus, get out of that. Get yourself out here and pay the price. Stop feeling sorry for yourself. Get out here and pay the price. This life is tough on all of us. It is, but we signed up for that, right? We here, we know it's going to be tough, but let's build wealth anyways. I'm not saying you don't mentally have a good sound mental. You do, but this whole thing of that's the only thing that's important. I mean, come on. This is the only thing that's important is just being in touch with nature and being in touch with Listen, guys, if that's how you want to lead your life, go ahead. I'm okay with that. Personally, for me, no. I want to have a lifestyle that I'm, I'm finding purpose and passion in, but I don't want to have to worry about how I'm going to take care of myself. Right? Th that's what I want. I know money will not make me happy. Money is just a tool. But I need to use that tool to put me in a position financially where I can go do the things that I want to do and chase the things I want to chase. See, see all this, all this propaganda about, uh, let me tell you something. The only people that say money is not important are people who ain't got no money. I'll never hear no billionaire say money ain't important. I don't ever see nobody up here living a great lifestyle because their assets take care of them say money ain't important. The only people I hear that say money ain't important is people who ain't got no money. That's typically who I hear say money ain't important. But I ain't never heard nobody that got money. Now, I've heard people that got money that says money ain't going to make you happy. I've heard that. But this whole notion of money ain't important. I ain't never heard nobody say that. They got no money. Mm -mm. Typically, you get that from people who ain't got no money. And that's their way of justifying because they ain't got no money. I'm just being honest with you. You don't hear anybody with money say money's not important. We hear people with money say money won't make you happy. 100% agree with that. But you never hear anybody with money say it's not important. You shouldn't focus on that. That's not important. Just so focus on your inner self. As long as your inner self is, you're in one with your inner self. Okay.
It's your life. You do whatever you want to do with it. But all I can tell you is I, I, I don't get that one. Money is important, guys. Or why do we have any? Why do we have to pay for stuff if money ain't important? Why do they make money? Why do we use money as a medium of exchange if it's not important? If it's not important, why don't we just barter everything? Okay, Richard, you got some eggs. Uh, you, you, you got a cow. I, I'll give you some of my eggs and you give me that cow. I mean, that's what we'd be doing. But we don't do that anymore. We did that 10,000 years ago, but we don't do it now. Money is important. It ain't going to make you happy, but it is important. Building wealth is important, guys, because it gives you the platform to be able to do the things you really want to do. See, see, personally, let me go get this money. Let me build this wealth. And then I'll focus on my, my Zen self. And then I'll get me some, 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 some meditation. Then I'll get me some, some hot yoga. Then I'll go get me a, 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 a weekend in the desert in some smoke tank. I mean, whatever thing people do to find themselves. I don't know. But I'll do all of that when I build his wealth. Then I'll get to that part. But until I build my wealth, I ain't got time for all that. I got time for doing what? Getting my butt up and, and grinding every day and taking this money that I make and putting it in assets that create passive income. That's what I do every day. When I do that and I'm done with that, then I'll go, like I told y'all, I'm going to the, to the Caribbean. I'm going to buy me a piece of land up somewhere on one of those deserted places in the Caribbean. Then I'll get me some Zen. Then I'll get me some meditation. Then I'll get me some long walks on the beach. I get all that then. But for now, mm -mm, I got to get this money. I got to get this money and I got to put it in assets to build wealth. So, so, so you do whatever you got to do. It's your financial plan. Y'all know how I feel about that. I, I, I'm just a big proponent of doing what you got to do to get to your wealth because I know how important it is for you to be at wealth. And you define wealth. Not me, not some other guy, not some other gal. You define wealth. But you got to define it. You got to define it. You got to define wealth and then do everything in your power to earn money, to keep that money, and then multiply that money. And it's going to take you 10 years. It's going to take you 15 years for most of us. So get used to that. Again, people email me, hey, I've been putting in $500 a month for the last three months. I see it's in the red today. When do we sell? I don't know when you sell, but I don't sell for 10 years. I don't know when you sell. Maybe you need to go, go, go back a step and figure out why you're doing all of this. Maybe you need to go back a step and figure out what your end result is. Because if you're asking me, do I sell right now, then you haven't even thought about what you're really trying to accomplish here. That's the first step, guys. You got to know what you're trying to accomplish. Right? You got to know what you're trying to accomplish. You got to have an end result. You have that end result. Then you put a plan together to get you there. Now, if your end result says, I want to invest this money for three months and then I'm out, then get out. Only you can decide that. I can't tell you when to get in or when to get out. I'm just telling you I ain't getting out for 10 years. That's all. If you want to get in there and jump in there for three months and, and, and you're done, all I would ask you is, is that has that three months created enough wealth to take care of yourself for the rest of your life? I don't know. Probably 99.999999% of the time it hasn't. So what's the point? Oh, I jumped in with my $500 and now it's $750. I'm up. Should I get out? Is that $250, $250 gain going to take care of you for the rest of your life? I don't know. If it is, get out. You put $500 in, you had a great first quarter, now it's up to $750. Now you're saying, Do, should I get out? And I'm saying, I don't know. Is the $250 that you've made in a gain, is that going to take care of you for the rest of your life? 
The whole point of me investing, guys, is to take care of myself for the rest of my life. It's not to make $250 or $300 or $1,000 and I'm bowling out of control now. I made $1,000. No, because that little $1,000 is going to be gone like that. Gone. I can't even pay my car insurance on one of my cars once every six months for $1,000. So what, what am I going to do with $1,000? I mean, my point is you got to figure out what the game plan is. You got to figure out what the game plan is and what you're trying to get accomplished. A lot of us start investing and we have no game plan. None. We heard somebody on YouTube. We heard somebody on TikTok. We heard somebody on Instagram. We heard somebody on Facebook. We dived in, but we have no idea why we're diving in. Other than because somebody told us to. And that's okay for you to take someone's suggestion. But my recommendation is... Know why you're taking that suggestion. Know why you're getting into it. Know what you're trying to accomplish. Have some type of goal. I had a good conversation yesterday with a, with a, with a, young, a young gentleman. Good guy. Doing his thing. Thinking about building wealth. Doing everything he can from an income standpoint. He's even looking to do more. Young guy. 34 years old. And he and I had a long conversation about just what are you trying to accomplish? And at what point in your life do you want to accomplish it? If you're 34 and you say by 50, I want to have this lifestyle, Richard, then I'm going to say, well, OK, you got 16 years to do what? Build wealth. So everything you do in these next 16 years with every dime you make will determine if you get there at 50 years old. That's the truth, guys. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. So if you make $150,000 and you want to take $100,000 of that money and just blow it on uh, having fun, how serious are you about getting to that number at 50? Not very serious. So that's why I say, guys, you got to have a target date, a target amount, a target net worth, and then you put the plan together. But if you do that, you got a chance to win, man, and win big. Don't allow me giving you information about what's going on in the marketplace scare you. It should, it should give you a sigh of relief to say, well, golly, okay, shoot, man, this guy is telling me kind of what's going on, but he's still saying I can build wealth. He's still building wealth. He's just trying to tell me kind of what's going on so I'm not in the dark. He's trying to just help me get some financial information that's, that's critical to me building wealth. You didn't hear me say one time I'm selling anything of mine. Never. I ain't selling for 10 years. I don't care what the stock market does because I know in 10 years, I got a better chance of being doubling my net worth if I just stay in here for 10 years than I do taking it out today and try to wait till the right time. I ain't gonna never build worth that wealth that way. Because I will never know when the right time is because I don't have the information that 1% has. Right? I'll never know. I'm going to always be one step behind. That's why I got to be in the market 365 days a year because I don't want to be one step behind or one day late. I don't. So that's what I'm telling you guys. Well, guys, I appreciate you stopping in today. We had a good conversation about this jobs report. We had a good conversation about the Fed and and the ability for the market to, to, take a, to take a dump. And uh, it might, it might. But again, like I told y'all guys, that's not bad news for us. If it takes a dump, we should welcome it, especially if we're 10 years out. We're five years out, 10 years out, 15 years out building wealth. We welcome a dump so we can gobble up all those assets like we did in 2022. I welcome it. I welcome the dump. I welcome the crash. I welcome it because I got 10 years before I need this money. The more I can buy them cheap, 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 the better off I'm going to be in 10 years. So if it dumps, okay, I'm still buying. If it don't dump and it keep going, okay, I'm going to still buy. So it don't matter what it does. I keep buying because I'm 10 years down the road. I know what can happen in 10 years because I've done it before. So all I'm telling you is get your plan together. Don't be afraid. Keep investing. 
Keep buying assets, have a long-term outlook, and you'll be fine. You will be fine. Next week, we'll have the CPI inflation report for March. We'll go through that and see how that will affect the Fed and its decision to reduce rates in the coming months. We'll go through that report as well. But in the meantime and in between time, y'all be good. Have a good weekend. You know I'll be back tomorrow morning at 10.30 a.m. Eastern time with one of the weekend live streams. We'll touch on a few things there. And then, of course, I'll be back on Sunday at 10.30 a.m. Eastern time with a live stream Q&A. Well, I'm answering all of y'all's questions about whatever financial you want to talk about that I have some experience in, right? I'll be doing that on Sunday morning. And on Saturday morning, we'll be doing some wrap up from this week. So I hope you guys join me, rock with me, be here tomorrow morning at 10.30 a.m. Eastern time to rock with me and get my thoughts on all financial topics. We don't leave nothing off the table. We put everything on the table, crypto, stocks, interest rates, economy, inflation. It's all on the table. So I'll see you guys tomorrow. But before I go, y'all know I got to ask you to do me a favor. Get down to that description box. Click on that Moomoo link. Open up your new Moomoo account today. They're going to give you the Magnificent Seven. Fractional share stocks. Can't beat that, guys. Y'all do know who the Magnificent Seven is. And if you don't, go to the Trillion Dollar Research Lab which is Google, and research the Magnificent Seven. They're going to give you the Magnificent Seven for free when you deposit $100 in your new Moomoo brokerage account. They're going to give you the Magnificent Seven. Seven stocks of the Magnificent Seven fractional shares. You can't beat that, guys. Now you got a brokerage account and you're ready to build wealth. And I'll do you one step better. You open that Moomoo account. You fund that Moomoo account. You're going to get the Magnificent Seven fractional share stocks. Then I'm going to send you a Moomoo tutorial video to, to show you how to use the Moomoo app to make your first trade and to show you around the Moomoo app so you know all the key points. You're familiar with it. Plus, I'm going to send you my wealth transfer blueprint video which outlines the three big boy blue chip paper assets I'm buying in 2024 and beyond for the next 10 years to double my net worth. You get both of those videos from me. When you open that Moomoo account, you fund it. You're going to get the Magnificent Seven fractional share stocks. And I'm going to send you those two videos to collapse time frames and get you off to a good start. All you got to do is email me and that's down in the description box, my email address. Also, don't forget to follow me on Instagram. That's down in the description box as well. The Instagram link for Richard Fane Millionaire Mentor. Don't forget to follow me there. A lot of good stuff going to be happening on the Instagram page as well. Y'all know, if you've been rocking with me, my old Instagram page, 90,000 followers. Dis disabled by Instagram. I guess too many scammers. So I created a new one. Now let's run that thing back up to 90,000 followers. If y'all rock with me, get down to that description box, click on that Moomoo link, open up that Moomoo account. If you rock with me, get down to that Instagram link, click on that Instagram link, come follow me over on Instagram. And then also the website coming out next week. Probably late next week, I'm launching the Richard Fane Millionaire Mentor website. It's gonna be killer, guys. My daughter has been working on this thing. She has almost got this thing ready to go. We're going to have digital products on there. We're going to have a, a, a membership through Patreon where it's just going to be a select few members where I'm going to be interacting with on a weekly basis, but not like we do on YouTube. These, uh, this membership is going to be different. We're going to be actually going through and, and actually doing cash flows and all that kind of stuff, looking at real individual stocks and talking through them. That is going to be that type of thing. It's not going to be me just giving the, the quick YouTube video or the lot. It's going to be different. So if you want to be a part of that membership, select group, guys, just a select group of folks. Then when the website comes out next week, you'll be able to do that. And you'll be able to also purchase some digital products around stock market investing, real estate investing, credit repair, all that stuff. 
That's coming on my own website that was created by my daughters and myself. And I think you guys are going to love it. So I appreciate y'all rocking with me, guys. Lock it in with a thumbs up before you get out of here. I appreciate y'all. Have a wonderful Friday. Take care of yourself. Get out there and build some wealth today. Go buy some assets today. Do me a favor. No, 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 no. Matter of fact, do you a favor. Go buy some assets today. Go buy you some paper assets today. Get, jump in your brokerage account and buy you some assets today. A lot of things on sale, guys. Don't be afraid. Get out there and build you some wealth. Buy you some assets today. Lock it in with a thumbs up before you get out of here, and I appreciate y'all. Thoughts become things. You can see it in your mind. You can hold it in your hands. You guys keep chasing your greatness. Never stop believing in yourself. Stay healthy. Get wealthy. And I'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace.